Hey guys, we're back with another eBay doohickey. This is a uh, digital tachometer, model number DT 2234C. Just uh, the cheapest one I could find, just a little laser based uh, tachometer there. You can do the whole sniper thing. So, um, yeah, basically, the way it works is it shoots the laser out, and we got a little uh, like photo transistor or some sort of light sensor in there. It looks like an LED in this in this case, just in the same package, and that detects the uh, the red light bouncing back. So what you do is you got something that's spinning, and you put a bit of this tape on it. It's the same sort of stuff you see on like those uh, high vis reflective vests, but it's in a um, like a sticker form. You cut a little bit off, put it onto your wheel or onto your your pulley or whatever you you want to uh, measure, and then as it spins around, it'll go past and uh, reflect back the red light. The interesting thing is when you uh, stick this down, it doesn't matter how far in or out of the uh, from the center of the circle that you put it because it's it's always going to be passing the same amount of time so if you've got a small disc and it's like one centimeter away but you might also have a, a disc that's a meter wide and if you put it right on the outside if they're spinning at the same RPM those two uh, pieces will rotate and pass at the same time the outside goes faster than the inside so yeah you can just stick it on anywhere that's convenient onto your, your rotating thing and this will pick it up and tell you what the RPM is. So we'll pull it apart, have a look inside, see how cheap it really is and then we'll give it a, um, a performance test. So here we got the uh, PCB from inside the unit. The quality is as you would expect. Um, looks like everything's been soldered on from the top, all the hand soldering because around the uh, the switches here, they've soldered from the, you can see all the, uh, the flux where they're soldered from the top but on the underside, it hasn't actually come through. So it's only soldered on one side of the double-sided PCB. So I might just touch them up with a bit of a solder. Also, the laser here is just kind of floating in midair. That's not so good. That's going to you know, eventually break off, fatigue and break the wires. So I'll put a blob of a hot snot, a bit of hot melt glue there. Here's the uh, the photo transistor or the, uh, the light detector of some description. And it looks like they've uh, colored the back of it black. That will just stop any... Uh, stray light from coming in the back and uh, affecting the readings. So it just basically shoots a laser out the front and then this one detects the reflection back of the light. Got a chip on board so I can't actually see the brains of how it works. It'll probably be a little custom chip underneath there. We've got two chips here. One of them I couldn't actually find out what it was. It doesn't come up at all in Google but the other one uh, is a just an I squared C kind of a little EEPROM there. E -E -prom. That'll be holding the firmware or um, calibration files or something. Probably just a bit of firmware to run the unit. On the back we got the usual zebra strip onto the um, onto the LCD and uh, yeah just a little bit of hand soldering here and there. Looks alright for a layout. Just uh, some of the hand soldering was a bit how you doing and uh, this floating uh, laser which I'm gonna glue down. But yeah pretty much all we got inside there. Alright so I'm set up here with a uh, LED connected to my function generator which is just up here somewhere and I've got my multimeter so we've got a, exactly 20 Hertz coming out that should translate to about or well, exactly 1200 RPM so LED that's actually flashing at a different rate than what it looks like because of the frame rate of the camera and all that but if I stick that in the front here and I press the test button and we should get 1200 Hertz look at that spot on perfect all right, let's uh, turn that up to another number, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, now we're at 100 hertz. You can't actually see it flashing because it's too quick now, but we'll see if we can pick it up. 6,000. Perfect. That's spot on. All right, let's turn this up and see how high it can actually read. Okay, so I've got this taped into place, the LED. I'll press the test button here. We're down at 18.5 hertz. That's as low as my function generator goes and we're at 1110 RPM. So I'll turn this up and we'll see how high it goes. So you can watch the two dials increasing. We'll crank that right up. We've got 100 Hertz and that's 6000 RPM like we just saw before. Now we are right up at 237 Hertz. 14,000 RPM. All right, I'll go to the next range. I'll get a, what? 
500 hertz that's 30,000 rpm it's getting pretty quick 1 kilohertz 6,000 rpm 60,000 rpm sorry 84 I'm gonna say it's gonna to go to 99999 and then freak out Nine two nine five nine six nine seven. Oh, slowly, slowly. Nine eight. We're at one point six kilohertz. Slowly, slowly. Seven eight nine. Oh, nearly there. There we go. Ninety nine thousand RPM. A little bit more. Oh, that's freaked out. Just goes high. Yeah, so 9,999. Oh, that's a little weird kind of thing there sometimes when it's overloading, or not overloading, but over speed. That's really weird. Kind of flickering on the display. Uh, but 999,999, which is understandable. That's as big as the display displays anyway. So it does work quite well, does the job. So let's see how this thing works in a real-world application. So I've got this motor, which I rebuilt in an early episode. And I've put some uh, tape on the shaft, the reflective tape that comes with the unit. And then I'll put some black tape around the back just so it's not uh, shiny because this, this shaft is kind of polished a bit and it's kind of shiny. So I want to make sure it goes light and dark like a definite change for the uh, sensor to pick up. So I'll turn this on and then we'll uh, shine the laser there and see what it says. 1490, 1492, around 1490. So that's working quite well. 1490 RPM, 1490 RPM and not a problem with detecting it's responsive and it works works fine so anyway that's all we got for this video don't forget we've got that patreon keep watching the videos and we'll see you next time